Well, before I get started, I, I want to activate the audience real quick. And so if you all can take out these wonderful devices that we all have, I'd like for you to either stand up or get with the person next to you, take a selfie, and let's promote this, this conference. We want to use hashtag Climate Corrections 2018. Please take one quick minute to literally take a selfie next to the person next to you. Let's post this up, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. Let's do it right now. I want to see everybody taking a picture. There we go, we got a couple of others, especially the students. Post that up, post that up. We want to get the word out. All right, and if you could bring it back to me, I only have a little bit amount of time. Thank you for indulging me with that. A good friend of mine, Andre Bailey, uses this strategy at events to one, activate people, but two, one thing that has stuck with me is that I truly also believe that we replicate what we celebrate. And it's really important that we're here together celebrating, getting the word about what we're doing. Hopefully other universities and cities replicate what we're doing. Very quickly, as um, and the work that I'm doing, as was introduced before, I'm the director of the Office of Sustainability and Resilience for the city of Orlando, and we've been under the guise of Greenworks Orlando over the last 10 years. Um, one thing I want to uh, underscore is the leadership that we have with our mayor, Buddy Dyer. This is an individual who over the last 16 years as, as mayor has prioritized the importance of sustainability. And last year, when our president uh, made the threat to, or a year and a half ago, to pull us out of the Paris Climate Agreement, Mayor Dyer was one of the few who stood up amongst the U.S. Conference of Mayors and created a momentum across the country where now over 400 mayors have committed to doubling down on our climate commitments, signing the under two MOU, which is the official Paris Climate Agreement for sub-national governments, and joining a coalition, uh, several different coalitions around the country and around the world, including the Global Climate uh, uh, Action Summit, uh, as well as the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy. This is something that is embedded within the DNA and the fabric of what we're doing in the city of Orlando. First and foremost, we realize that the greatest opportunity we have is to transition to the clean energy economy. We've been talking a lot about that. And so I want to underscore a couple of points. One, last August, we made a commitment as one of the largest cities in the country to move the entire city to 100% renewable electricity. Our goal is by 2030, powering all city operations. That means wastewater treatment plants, Amway arenas, Camping World stadiums, city halls, you name it, by renewables. And by 2050, the entire electric grid in Orlando, every home, every business, every facility being powered by clean, affordable, renewable energy. We've started to expand significantly in our renewables. Uh, we have a lot of rooftop PV, over 600 kilowatts that we've installed. This is the most recent one. Uh, and it's the first net zero energy facility that we've now officially built. More power is being produced on site than we're consuming throughout the entire, uh, throughout the entire year. And we're really excited to, to make this a, a requirement. In fact, every new building in the city of Orlando that we own must be a lead silver requirement, and it has to be solar ready. We have to run the conduit lines. We have to have the inverter pads. We have to have the bus bar enough to add solar if and when, when, we're, when the time is right. One of the biggest barriers, and we talked about it throughout some of the panels, is being able to afford or finance clean energy improvements to our homes and our businesses. Two years ago, we were able to move forward with enabling a marketplace around PACE, the Property Assessed Clean Energy Mechanism. There's $500 million in Orlando today for homeowners, and business owners, that's residential and commercial, to now get upfront the capital needed to make these investments and repay through the property taxes very creatively over long periods of time. This is a clean energy driver. We've been doing millions of dollars of improvements the last year and, and much more to come. And then in partnership with our utility, I mentioned some of the collaboration that we have with OUC, but we are a family. We're one family between the city and our utility, and we've been working with them on rolling out very in, um, innovative programs that utilities are leading. The first one I want to uh, recognize is the Community Solar Farm. This is a 20 megawatt 
community solar farm, or this one is 13 megawatts, so is a total of 20 that they have in the portfolio. But the beauty about this is if you live in an apartment or a home with beautiful tree canopy coverage and can't put solar on your roof, you can subscribe into this solar farm and offset 100% of your electricity from solar. Um, we as the city decided to make a strong commitment and I brokered a deal to buy 5.2 megawatts per month uh, of that electricity, which now fully offsets Orlando City Hall, 17 fire stations and the Orlando, Orlando Police Headquarters completely powered by solar. And the impact that we're having in reducing the amount of coal being burned, upwards of 6 million pounds, and the amount of CO2 emissions going in the atmosphere is a drastic impact. Um, in addition, Sorry, real quick. What's innovative is some of our public utilities are coming together with very interesting models. This is what's called the Florida Municipal Solar Project. 14 utilities, including OUC, came together and bulked purchased large-scale PV, 223.5 megawatts together. Or OUC in Orlando, we decided to commit to 108.5 megawatts. That'll move us from 2% solar to almost 9% solar in a matter of two years. This thing will be built by 2020. So so a huge commitment, OUC came out, and this is some of the media, committing to 120 megawatts by 2020. This is moving the needle substantially. There's a collective solar program going on. And then I wanted to end off with two really innovative programs. After Hurricane Irma and Maria, Mayor Dyer charged me with finding a mobile solar and storage solution for lift stations, for traffic signals, for et cetera. And we've been able to work on procuring 35. We have upwards of 100 that we're gonna be getting that are mobile solar and storage uh, charging stations. Now they're being deployed throughout the city for night lighting and things like that. And lastly, some of the innovation around uh, floating solar, what we call photovoltaics. UCF has a, a nice five kilowatt system here. We have about 31 kilowatts that's been installed for the last year and a half. And in the pipeline, we have floating solar going in at the airport. We have floating solar going in at some wastewater treatment plants. The idea is we can harness the power of a lot of these man-made retention ponds and produce hundreds of megawatts of solar to power our grid and power our future. Um, lastly, I'll leave you out with, we just published our community action plan. This is the new sustainability roadmap, the updated roadmap, and I invite you to go onto the website, orlando.gov slash greenworks, and you can look into the specific strategies, not just in energy, but transportation, water, local food, livability, um, clean energy, and much more. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Looking forward to carrying on.